I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 34, 1. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. <laughs> Glory. Praise your name. I thank you, Lord God, for your word this morning. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. I ask Holy Spirit that we would align ourselves, that we would align our emotion and our wills up with your word, Lord God, that we would get locked in place as a space module locks into the mother ship, that we would lock into that, Lord God, and that we would receive that life from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I just declare over your life, wholeness, health, peace, prosperity in every area of your life. Glory. This morning, I want to talk about our wills. Our wills. We have free will. We have the ability to agree or disagree on something. And I'm sure that most people agree or disagree on something. You may di agree or disagree with what I do in the mornings. Maybe you agree, di agree with it all the time. Maybe you disagree with it all the time. Maybe it exposes the truth to you and it makes you uncomfortable. Well, that's all right. That's okay. We can't allow our freedoms to be stopped by somebody else. And we have to align our will to the Lord our God. He, he isn't asking for people that, that do their own thing. He's not asking for somebody to go out and do their own thing and in their own strength bring glory to Him. He's not asking for that. He's asking you to bend your will to His will. To, to dock your will to His will. To partner up with him. Jesus said, not my will, Lord. For your will be done. Um, we all have a cup to drink from time to time. And how we react and walk through those things, it shows where our will is. If we get mad, if we get defensive, if we, we, we make excuses... We are wearing a big leaf of shame in those times. We are in pride. And we need to drop that pride. We need to begin to, to align our will to the Lord's will. And the uh, definition of will this morning is used to express desire, choice, willingness, consent, or in a negative constructions, refusal. In negative constructions, refusal. We'll either align our will with God or we won't. Um, I mean, I can't make it any more cut and dry than that. We either will or we won't. What What are you going to do? Are you going through some rough times and you've decided that God has abandoned you? Well, that's not true because His Word says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And... and in our rough times, we really need to praise the Lord because that's the only way we're going to get through those rough times without losing our grip on where our reality is and coming out worse on the other end and having to start all over again. Um, and when we're not doing that, when we're not keeping our eyes focused, the enemy has a chance to sneak in and lie to us. Glory. Uh, Psalms 34, 1, it says, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Okay, he didn't say I'll bless the Lord in my good times and in my bad times I'll just walk away, throw up my arms and, and make all kinds of excuses why I can't join my will to the Lord's will. Why I can't trust in Him. Why we'll have all these excuses. I know I've been there. And I really believe that the Lord wants to create a, an opportunity for us to break through. I can't escape that word breakthrough. I absolutely cannot escape from that word. And, and the more I try not to think about it, the more I think about it. <laughs> and I want to think about it because I want to be free. My freedom is contingent on me. I, I'm in charge of my own freedom. God offers it. It's up to me if I take it or not. What about you? I've heard people say some things recently that aren't true. 
that aren't true. But they choose to live in that place. And no matter what you tell them, they get irritated because you speak the truth to them. And, and the truth will irritate. The truth will expose. Uh, if you're wearing a Band-Aid, you got to say you got a cut on your arm right here, and you got this big old huge band aid on there, and you need to change it because it's been sitting on there for three or four days. So you start to rip and you irritate that thing. But getting the air on it and getting it exposed to the light is the best thing for it. And that's the way it is with the truth. The truth will irritate, the truth will cause us to shrink back. The truth will, will irritate us. It will put us in a defensive posture. It will cause us to go like this. Because it begins to blind us. But once we look past being blinded, we stand there and the truth begins to illuminate. We see that healing is starting to come. Glory. But in our worst times, we have to align our will. We have to dock our will with the Lord's. We have Oh, yes, yes. I don't like where I'm at, Lord. But I trust you. I praise you at all times. I bless your name. I've made up my mind. Several months ago, I made up my mind that I was going to praise the Lord and bless his name, irregardless of what I felt. Even if it didn't feel good to do it, I was going to do it anyway. Because I... I don't want my walk to be a walk of when I feel good. And when I don't feel good, I'll run out and do these other things. That's not the way it works. And we have to see that. We have to look down that path. Lord, just set your face like flint and look forward and not look to the right or the left. But look forward. Don't go back to your Egypt when the times get hard. Don't blame God when you choose to, to live in that place. Don't say, well, because I'm not coming out of this thing. I've been suffering this thing so long. God must have forsaken me. I blame him for this. Where were you, God, when I was going through this? Well, let me ask you a question. Where was the praise from your lips? When you began to go through that. Were, were, were you building up your hope in this? Or were you every day expecting more of the same? And in, in, in regards to whatever we go through, it's our choice. We're the captain of our ship. The Holy Spirit is the admiral. Jesus is the admiral. The Father is the admiral. That's the admiralty. That's the dudes in charge. They give us our orders and we get to sail around. But we have to see that when we're, when we're, sometimes we feel like we're all alone. But can we praise God in those times of aloneness and abandonment? I, uh, yesterday at the home meeting, I had a breakthrough. I absolutely had a breakthrough. I didn't own the meeting. <laughs> I didn't own it. And didn't walk out of it thinking I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Or I or 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 I might have offended somebody, or I might have did this, that, and the other thing. I did my job. The Lord gave me orders. I floated in there, did what I was supposed to. And now it's on him. It's on him. It's not on me. I don't have to carry that burden. And you know, it felt so freeing last night to to know that I was able to just say, thank you, Lord. And I was able to share with my partner there, my awesome brother, that, hey, we did our job. We did what we were supposed to. We planted our seeds. Now it's up to God. Now it's up to God. That is empowerment. That's that's being free. That's saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. That's breakthrough. I was scared going in. I was victorious going out. <laughs> Glory. No matter what the enemy does, I'm going to overcome. Glory. That's what I've made up my mind to do. What are you making your mind up to do? Glory. 
And in Psalms 34, verses 3 through 7, it says, O magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, delivered me from all my fears. Um, you know, what were all his fears? <laughs> I sought the Lord in that time, and he delivered me from all my fears. Yesterday I went in fearing, fearing man. That was the whole thing, right? I was afraid of what people were going to think about this message that I was given yesterday. I had to repent. We, we were having uh, communion last night. And I had to repent for that fear and not have the, having the fear of God. Being afraid. It's okay to have fear. It's okay to have negative things. But what's not okay is making those things greater than the God that you have living within you. Greater than Jesus. And so, <laughs> at any rate, I repented. And as soon as I began to speak, within a minute or so, maybe two minutes, there wasn't any fear there. It wasn't. I wasn't conscious of of, of anything. A, to, a time or two during this, I was wondering if anybody was getting offended by it because we've been going through so many struggles. But some people won't release their struggles. They they choose to hold on to those things, and they and they choose to declare them. And when others step in to say, hey, you know, this is, you know, this is a godly advice here. This is what you need to do. They refuse that. They don't believe that. They don't think that will overcome what their problem is. So they choose to hold on to it. Uh, a brother had godly advice for another person. He said, search the word. Look the word up for your problem. And begin to study that out. Begin to speak those scriptures. Keep reading those same scriptures over and over again. If it's fear, look at the scriptures on fear. Delivered me from all my fears. And then we'll continue here. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers him. Um, you know, what what we're not seeing in that scripture, if we, but if we read a little deeper, he had fears. He, 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 was, he was in struggle and strife. Yet through that, he still sought the Lord. And he believed him for his deliverance. And if we begin to search and seek and believe, we're going to see that the angel of the Lord encamps around us. That he does deliver us from our fears. That there is breakthrough. Glory. You know, and, and, and human, human life or humanity is fraught, is, is fraught with troubles. It's, it's, I mean, they're all over the place. They're all over the place. There's troubles that abound in galore. I mean, there's Goliaths everywhere. There's people that want to hang us on a cross everywhere. There's these things, there's those things, but through those things, if we can push them back for just a minute and, and praise the Lord through whatever we're going through, we're going to overcome these things. Let the eyes of love look upon you in, in His glory. Let His glory surround you. In Psalms 34, it says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Why would you take refuge in him if you didn't have something going on? You, you've heard of refugee camps. Why is there a refugee camp if there isn't a war going on? That causes you to root up and move. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. When times of trouble come, if we would just go to the Lord and begin to embrace the changes, the process, and get with the Lord and begin to hand Him. He says, he says cast your cares upon Him for He cares for you. If we begin to do these things and we begin to seek the Lord and we begin to praise Him in spite of what we see, 
We become stronger. We get moved to another level. We are empowered to bear good fruit. Glory. Glory. It's our choice. My freedom is contingent on me, and not on you, not on my wife, not on my job, not on my pastors, not on the people I go to church with. My happiness and my well-being is between me and God. In spite of my fear, I'm going to push forward, and I am going to praise you in the midst of that mighty God. Or. What are you going to do when you have to take refuge, when the storms of life get too bad? Are you going to throw it all down and just walk away and go back to your Egypt or turn around and look at Sodom and Gomorrah and say, huh, and, become, <laughs> and just become a pillar of salt? We absolutely have to retain our saltiness. We're not going to be good for anything. If we always allow the storms to keep us down and never try to rise above them, that's where a walk's going to be. Ineffective. Glory. And I want you to see that in the midst of what is going on <laughs> in a man's life, he stands firm and says, not my will, but your will. I will praise you irregardless of what is going on. I will break through this thing. In Mark 14, 36, and he said, that's Jesus, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but your will, but what you will. Jesus, his humanity, did not want to go to the cross. He didn't want to suffer what he was about to suffer. He didn't want to suffer a more than comprehensive abuse. I mean, you know, we, we talk about people who get abused nowadays. This man got abused. He was beaten and pounded and pulverized into a state of not being recognizable. His blood was shed for us that we would overcome these things. He showed us what one man rightly connected to God could do. That in the midst of his trials, he could still say, not my will, but your will be done. He died to himself that we might live. We have to see this. We have to, especially in times like these. You know, I look around and I think, you know, they're moving into some pretty dark times. And I'm not trying to be uh, end time-ish here on this. Because every generation has got its dark times. It's got its light times and its dark times. But there's some things I'm seeing that God's going to be changing in the body because we need that for the times to come. We need judges in the body. Those who rightly discern and begin to prophetically speak out. You might hear more of that in the near future too. But right now we need to see that it's only po breakthroughs only possible if we're willing to embrace the process and own who we are, and own our own actions, and 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 position ourselves to praise God through the situations and believe that He will walk with us, that He encamps around us, that He gives us a place of refuge in those times of storm when we're when we feel like we're being uprooted. I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. You're awesome, as usual. And I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus. So thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace upon this word this morning. 
I thank you, Lord, for the life you've placed in us. And I'd ask, Holy Spirit, that we would begin to examine ourselves and that we would ask you to examine us and see what areas of light and which areas of darkness are in our lives and ask, Holy Spirit, that you would illuminate those areas of darkness, those, those belief systems that aren't true, those belief systems that hold us back from what we're supposed to be doing, Lord. And that we would dock our wills to you, Lord. I thank you for this. Or this morning again, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey! <laughs> Glory. Glory, that was a powerful word. That was a powerful word. Believe it. <laughs> the Lord all over it. Just started to work on a new song. Let me try it. Let me see if I can get this. Just get along with the Lord. Begin to praise Him. Begin to thank Him. Become worship. Let's worship God. Must worship in the Spirit and in truth. <laughs> Playing around with it right now. It's a beautiful song. Hey, we'll see you. Bye. <laughs>